Good morning, good afternoon and good evening. Welcome back to Jamie Photography. So in this video, we're going to go back to one of my favorite spots. I know I did a video a few months ago of the shambles in York in England, um, the, 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 the very street that uh, JK Rowling's modeled uh, Diagon Alley on, beautiful place. Uh, I did get here early hours of the morning uh, to get this shot so that we were people free. And uh, what I wanted to try to do in this shot was show you how we can use artificial lighting uh, to light an area and balance that off against the deep contrast that we often find when we shoot at night with street lighting. And uh, just to show you where we started, um, there we go, that's the original shot. But what we're going to do is we're going to do an HDR and we're going to bring down the highlights and bring up the shadows so that we can we can close that that sort of really deep contrast in a way that opens up the shadows brings down the highlights gives us a more pleasing uh, effect so i'm going to show you how to do that in the comments down below you will find the two raw files uh, for this particular tutorial feel free to download them and follow along all I, all I ask is, is that you please uh, respect my copyright. If you do choose to reuse or repost the images, then all I would ask is that you please, you give credit to uh, myself, Jamie R. Mathlin. The sky I'm not going to give you because I'm working on a sky set at the moment, uh, which I will be putting up for sale in the next month or so. At the moment, I'm working through the night skies and, uh, and starry and moonlit skies to try to give some really good high quality images they will all be shot in raw and, and will be published in dng as well as jpeg and uh, they will be done at a very reasonable price i think it's important that we keep everybody in this hobby uh, together uh, not just the very wealthiest of us so so please look out for those when I, I i bring them out anyway if you haven't already subscribed it would be wonderful for you to uh, join my adventure here on youtube and if you do like the video as we go through please click like down below and I do love your comments and your questions and tips that you bring forward um, it's really good to uh, hear your views and uh, reflect on the work that I do so thank you in advance for for any comments or questions you bring okay let's get started so I've got three three images here taken on a tripod uh, first one six seconds second one is 25 seconds third one is 30 seconds hit the 30 second limit on the camera uh, could have said it to uh, interferometer or bulb and gone longer but uh, felt that probably 30 seconds was enough to get where we needed to be here and what you'll see is this image was taken uh, if I just change that there at um, 20 past three in the morning so 29th of June this year uh, nearly the longest day of the year so it doesn't really get dark in the in north of England completely dark so as you can see here it tends to stay blue hour so 3:21 in the morning uh, the only way to really get get a free space nobody else there and um, so I shot a longer shot 30 seconds as you would normally do for a nighttime shot but what you do is you end up getting a huge amount of uh, glare from the lights uh, a lot of contrast uh, between the dark and the bright now I've got these beautiful uh, star lines from the lights because I shot at f11 so we're getting diffraction uh, when we shoot there so I wanted to try to get that effect is in fact it's more than I was expecting uh, to be honest so I also shot the shorter six seconds so I could get the lights uh, a little bit less bright it's still very very bright but they they now are getting closer to the dynamic range uh, of, of what the ca camera is capable of so if I if I reduce the highlights down if I go all the way down they look a little bit unnatural so if I bring them up just a little bit to about here, that actually they work quite well. Um, and, and I can also, on the 30 second shot, bring down the highlights as well. But I don't want to go too far so that they're unnatural, but certainly around about there would be about right. I'm also going to open up the shadows in this 30 second image as well. So incredible dynamic range these modern cameras have. It really is uh, quite stunning what you, can, uh, what you can achieve. And I'm also going to open up the shadows here a little bit there and just a little bit of brightness not too much I don't want to brighten those lights too much now what we're going to do is we're going to take these two images so this one's selected at the moment I'm going to hold down the command key here and select the only select one and three so now I've got both of these two images selected what I want to do is I want to denoise 
uh, these use the noise. I know you might say, well, will it ISO 100? Uh, so wh why do we need it? But if you if you do take a chance to just look into the shadows, you'll see there's a little bit of noise along here. You can just see a little bit of noise there. You can see here on the sign here where you can buy uh, cauldrons and, and, and quills and many other things in this shop. I do like this shop. Wands, robes and brooms. The shop that must not be named. Fantastic name for a shop. Um, real place uh, in the shambles in, uh, in York. So what we're going to do is, having got both of those selected, we're going to go down here to um, Detail, on the right-hand side. We're going to select Denoise. And then Denoise is just going to open the module up. And because the noise levels are actually quite low, because it is ISO 100, we don't really need to apply a huge amount of Denoise. 50% is more than enough. And if I go over here into the, this sort of area, you can see, uh, for example, that little alarm box there, which we will remove in a while. So before and after, it is definitely sharper. And if you get up there into these, the, the area we were looking at with the sign here, so before and after. Now, maybe you can't see that through the YouTube algorithm, um, but there is, there is quite a difference. So I'm going to say I want to enhance these images and that's a good thing about denoise you can select as many images as you want um, so if you wanted to just denoise everything you brought to camera um, because it's raw um, you could select everything click denoise and go off and have a cup of tea uh, and then come back later um, in this case we're going to do the two images we've selected so I'm going to enhance the two images and it's just as you can see up in the top here it's going to work through the, the denoise function now this this particular function is very much based on the performance of your computer specifically your cpu and gpu performance so your graphics card and your main processor um, and the better machine you have the quicker it will do this so the the apple silicon processors the newer ones uh, do this very very quickly very very well as you can see here uh, i don't that took probably around 20 seconds which was the estimate to do both these 45 megapixel images which is which is pretty quick to be fair so um, I'm delighted that we have great cameras and we have very good computers available to us so now we've denoised both of these scenes and again we can zoom in there and you can see that that's nice and sharp um, but what I do want to do is I just want to apply a little bit of sharpening um, so I'm just going to bring the sharpening up to to about 55 here just just so it's a little bit sharper in around this area we can do localized sharpening later but as you can see there this really is very very sharp now so we've got both those images there um, have now been uh, had the noise there's the original raw and there's the enhanced noise reduction version so we make sure that we select the the two newer versions so that's the noise enhanced that's the noise enhanced so I'm going to press command again and select the two noise enhanced versions of this particular image and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on one of these selected ones go to photo merge and I'm going to go to HDR I'm going to bring both images together into a single image um, and I'm not going to overdo the HDR I just want to blend the light levels a little bit better so that the darker lights um, and the brighter lights can be brought together to make it quite usable as you can see, I've got auto align selected. You can select auto settings if you want to, but it, it just tends to bring everything to an average and we'll, we'll deal with light in a while. Then you have the denoise, um, the level of denoise that you want to apply. Now denoise is for anything that's moving. So if you had somebody walking in this scene and you selected a denoise, it would pick up on the fact that between the two images, there was a difference and it would pick the better of the two uh, images and only render that in the scene if you selected you know the higher you went create stack effectively puts the two images that you've got here behind the new hdr one so effectively you don't end up with many 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 uh images in your film strip so i'm just going to select create stack as well and i'm going to click merge and then you'll see on the top left corner it will bring those together as an hdr and uh, and then it will drop an HDR image into the uh, into the bottom here. And there we go. We select that one. So this is uh, an enhanced noise reduct reduced uh, high dynamic range image. OK, so that's where we want to be. So I'm just going to give that a, a two star to say I'm working at the moment by pressing number two on the keyboard so I can get back to it if I should want to quite easily. 
So now what we need to do is we need to brighten this scene up a little bit so we can do some work inside Photoshop just to tidy up any bits and pieces we're, we're not too happy about. Um, but what I would like to do is do the crop now and the perspective. I normally do that before I, I go over to Photoshop. So let's do the perspective first. So I'm just going to brighten the scene a little bit, bring down the highlights as we did before, open up the shadows just a little bit there. And I'm just going to bring up the brightness just so we can see where we're working. Now, one thing that you find with um, the transform function is auto tends to work reasonably well, but I tend to prefer to use guided. Um, and if I select guided, you can see there's a little magnifying box, which uh, which sort of allows me to, to effectively pick the edge there. Now you notice it's quite pixelated and, and that's because the image itself has not been fully rendered. So if I just come out of guided for, for a moment here, just click off there. And I, you see, I've got a positive on my brush for the normal scene. If I click and zoom in, you see it's pixelated. Well, then render the, the scene. So I've actually got that set at 400%, which is very, very close. But it's now rendered the full image for us. So if I zoom back, we now have a fully rendered image available to us to work. So if I go back into Guided, you'll notice that the, the magnifying glass is now really clear. You can see. So you can actually pick exactly what you want to do. So so I'm going to use this drain pipe here. I'm going to select there and I'm going to hold the, the mouse button down and I'm going to go down to the bottom there. So I'm using that as a straight line and I want to use one of these pillars over here as a straight line. So same thing. I'm just going to go there and I'm just going to pull those two together. Now it looks reasonably good. However, uh, I think we want to bring this sign down a little bit straighter. Now we have to be a bit careful if we do this, because if I if I pull another one out on here, it will put it completely flat and it will mess up the um, the perspective slightly. So what you want to do is you want to to try to 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 just move it above there. You see, I just grabbed it and moved it up so you can just move it to a different position and then it will render the scene based on this being a straight and this being a straight, a vertical and a horizontal. But I don't want it too horizontal. You saw before I put that in, it was it was it was quite quite pronounced. It was up here. So I just bring that down just a little bit just to bring it slightly closer into the scene here. And uh, that that seems to work quite well. I think we also going back to crop here just need to just rotate slightly just to get that sort of feeling that it's uh, it's in the right it's in the right place. Let's just see if that works. Yep. So that that's that's working quite well in terms of the perspective that we need. Now we need to do the crop. Now I could use this window and brighten everything up in this window, and I think that would work quite well. But the shop does have two sides to it, and the signage up here is is really really good so we want to try to include this so i think this lends itself to a one one by one so if i go into the crop tool there and i select click on original and select one times one it will lock it into a one times one you can see the padlock's now on and if i move any of these sides even if i grab one of these sides it will just make the object bigger or smaller it will keep the one-to-one -one perspective that we're looking for and if i just grab the center of the screen here and just move it across you can see I can pick where I where I, where I want to go. So I think I probably want the door in there, and uh, I definitely want this this window in here. So I'm just going to put it there for now. But I do need to look at the perspective again. It's not this needs to be straight, and I'd like this turned in a little bit more. So I'm going to go back to guided. You can see there we've still got transform shape, and to get the lines back up, you click on this little hash button here, and that brings the lines back up. So I want this crop that we've now selected to have a straight edge here okay now the best thing to do is probably just to click on this one press delete and remove it and then go into what what we wanted which was the edge of this this window here and just make that the new straight edge so it effectively runs parallel there with the edge of the screen you can see that works quite well and i want to turn the bottom of this away a little bit from here so that the perspective here works quite well so I can pull this back and you can see you can you can move going left or right you can move this so I'm going to go a bit further to the left just to get that even more vertical and you can see that line there is almost vertical it just needs to come back a little whisper there we go that's that's pretty well there now and this side is straight as well and we've got the silence we want so we've now got the perspective uh, correct so I'm just going to go back to crop 
and I want to just bring that over to the edge of that door there. There we go. Just going to bring that to the edge there. And here, I just want to bring this ever so slightly over just so it's running along that line down that window. And that works quite well. Um, I'm just going to bring that up because I like this beautiful cobbled paving. So I'm just going to bring that to the bottom there because um, this sign up the top here we're going to remove. So happy with that. So I'm going to hit return. And uh, I think we've now got good perspective and we've also got a good crop. So what we need to do now is pop over into Photoshop and just remove some alarm boxes and some cable connectors and a, a few marks and bits and pieces on the street. So I'm just before I do that, just going to bring down the highlights just a little bit more, because once we go into Photoshop, um, whatever we do in there will be fixed. When we come back into Lightroom, we'll have a TIFF and we won't be able to make these changes so easily. It'll still be a 16 bit file and most of the, the data will be there in terms of the dynamic range. But it's best to try to get it where you want it before you move over. So I'm going to probably come down just a little bit more to about to about there. And we'll correct that when we when we come back in. So I'm going to right click now, edit in. Now I'm still using the Adobe Photoshop beta version. The new the new version of Adobe Photoshop 2024 is available and up and running now. And I have used it. So you can now use generative fill for commercial purposes um, within that within that application. Um, but I still find that the um, beta version for some reason gives us a little bit more uh, accuracy with the generative fill. It's something that we're going to have to see how, how it works forward uh, and how it develops. So I'm going to edit in, click photo, Photoshop, beta, there it is. And then I can just go down to Photoshop and uh, select Photoshop and you'll find that it's already over there very quick. OK, so I'm just going to, um, I just selected full screen there so it fits the full screen. Now I'm just going to go to the magnifying glass and go to uh, fit screen. So we've got it nice and big in the screen here. Now we need to look at what it is we want to remove here. Now I also want to do a sky replacement. This blue sky is rather boring and it really is in contrast to, to the lighting. So we will do that last of all, but I just want to take out some of these bits and pieces that are dotted around. So and there's a lot of labels and things on this door, which are a little bit distracting. So let's zoom in and have a look at the door first. So I've got the positive there and I'm going to hold down the space bar just so I can move. So things like these gift cards and CCTV and fire alarm and all this sort of stuff really isn't this top bit looks OK. So firstly, we're going to start off using the remove tool. So I'm going to click on the remove tool. So if you go to the spot healing brush tool, there is a selection there for remove tool. And I'm going to take the, a smaller remove tool. And I'm just going to select around like this, around that particular object. Now, you don't need to fill in the, the middle. You can just let go. It will automatically fill in the middle and it will remove the, the object that you've got there. So this looks OK. I think this 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 should be all right in the window. These definitely need to go. We, I know that we need to have these legal fire alarm labels and bits and pieces, but certainly back in medieval times, these weren't around. So I'm just... Uh, just coming up there again, just just go around the outside. It auto fills and removes it. It's it's sort of copied what's down below into this one up here. So that's OK. We want to get rid of the gift cards. Going to make the brush a little bit smaller, just using the square brackets to the left of the um, return key. And again, I'm just going to go around, just paint that out, automatically selects it and removes it. Now that that's gone with quite a black removal. It hasn't put the lines in there. So Command or Control Z to undo that. Um, we, we'll have a look at that with Generative Fill. Let's take out this CCTV label here. There we go. It's a little bit difficult along the edge there, so you can just run back along the edge, and it it will hopefully find find itself. It didn't. So what we can do there is go to the uh, Clone Stamp tool. I'm just going to select that. I'm going to take a small brush. Not too big. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to right click, uh, sorry, press the Alt button um, and then uh, just the option on a Mac. Select that. So I've got a copy of that there and I'm just going to move that into there. And as you can see, as I paint across, the line effectively moves across with it. I'm just going to reselect that. So hold down the Alt or Option key and I'm just going to come in here 
and uh, connect that to there. So as you can see, we've effectively redrawn that line across here. If we want to fill in this light area as well, we can still use the stamp tool here. I can select this sort of darker area up here. I can come down to about here and I can sort of just paint across and down and I'm copying where the cross is effectively from above. There you go. So I can I can remove that. So this gift card is a little bit more difficult. The remove tool didn't want to try to get rid of this gift card here. So we're going to go to use generative fill. So we're going to go up to the lasso tool. In fact, actually, I'm going to right click on the lasso tool and take the polygonal lasso tool, which allows us to draw straight lines. And I'm going to click once, left click there, left click again, and just basically draw around this, uh, this label on the door. There we go. So we've got our selection. I'm going to click generative fill. Now, what I always do in my videos when using generative fill, I do speed up the generative fill because it takes about 10, 15 seconds to do to do it because it has to send the information off to Adobe um, to their servers. They process it, send it back. So when I click generate, I will speed the, speed the video up. So as you can see, where when we removed with the remove tool, it just gave us a black square, but the generative tool has, has kept the shutters in place, which is, which is very good. So that's option one. Option two, option three. So option one is actually the best one. So happy with that. So let's let's move around. Sorry, I clicked there. Let's move around the rest of the screen here. There's a little label there, so we can go back to the remove tool, and uh, we can select the background layer, so we can use the remove tool. And we're just going to come over that, draw that one out. That looks all right. I'm just going to take out these these little pieces here. They're a little bit distracting, and I think I'm going to take out this white piece. So um, there we go. That looks better. Quite happy with this little box in there. There's this white cable obviously feeding the back of this sign here. So we're just going to, using the remove tool, we're just going to um, remove that. Let's make sure we get all of it. There we go. So you can just wash over it with the, uh, with the remove tool. Works very, very well. So you don't want any little distractions on the door uh, through the window. Um, you can see the reflection here of the light frame from the other side. And this is, I'm going to leave that in there. I just don't like that little bright bit there. I'm just going to take that, that little bright bit out so it doesn't dominate that particular area of the door. So holding down the space bar, I'm going to move around and have a look to see that we're all good. All the uh, patina, all the knocks and da damages, how many thousands of people have walked past there. Incredible. You know, the, the shambles was established back in the 1380s and, and many of these shops are original shops from that time. I'm sure they've had, you know, glass replaced and window frames replaced over time, but uh, they are generally uh, the original, original places. However, I am quite sure that there wasn't uh, 16 amp, 230 volt plugs in the uh, in the medieval times. So we're just going to draw around that. We're going to try and use the remove the remove tool here just to see if we can get rid of that. Yeah, it didn't work too bad. And I just want to reduce the impact of a lot of these cables. So uh, where they're where they're quite bright, you know, here we can see that it's sort of sweeping round. Um, we can take out any of the cables that are a little bit distracting. I'm going to leave this black panel here. That looks OK. Um, yeah, big bunch of cables coming around there. So let's just uh, let's just remove that cable there. So remember, we are zoomed in really, really, really tight. So uh, it, you know you you don't need to go too crazy with uh, with the removal. I might use generative fill for this. So I'm going to go back to the lasso tool, select the freehand lasso tool, and I'm just going to draw around here. There we go and just take out the cables. I don't want to see that big bunch of cables right there. So click generative fill and generate. There we go, option one, option two, option three. Now I think uh, option one's probably the best. A little bit of mess around there, but that, that's not a problem. I'm just going to reselect the background layer there, go back to the remove tool. Take a smaller remove tool and just take out that little bit of cable there. Okay, that's in the generative fill layer. So I'm just going to bring these together. So we're going to right click and um, on the on the layer here, right click and select merge visible. Just bring them together, and then we can we can actually 
adapt this level. So let's carry on. So I'm just going to zoom around. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. So just to just to see whether there's anything else here. Maybe take some of this. Uh, looks like bird uh, droppings off the sign. Hopefully that will work okay. Yeah. Right, let's pop over this side. I definitely know that we have an alarm box up here that we want to get rid of. Um, and we also have a sign right at the top here. So I'm going to use generative fill for that. So I'm going to go back to lasso tool, take the polygonal tool here, and I'm going to just draw straight lines around this to get rid of it. And I'll come back across the top like so. Generative fill and generate. We go option one, option two, option three, I think. Option three is the best one. I'm just going to move down slightly, space bar. We're going to do the same again. I'm just going to take out this alarm box using the, um, the polygonal lasso tool. In fact, I might take out this this bright bit here as well, just to just to be sure. So I've selected round it, generative fill and generate. Now this time I'm not going to speed it up. I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about the fact that. As you're probably aware, it looks like generative fill is going to be only available through token use. So you will really need to have a subscription uh, to use the, the generative fill function. If you have the photographer's pack, which is Lightroom and um, Photoshop from Adobe, um, then you do get, I believe, 250 tokens per month. So as we go through here today, and this is quite a lot of work being done on this one, I think you'll find I'm going to use roughly about six or seven generative fills in total because I know people thinking, well, 250, that's probably not going to be enough. But if I'm using six or seven, which is quite a lot for me, actually, um, you can see that I'd have to do an awful lot of photographs every month to use up my quota because that quota will renew each month. So where you can try to use the remove tool. Uh, I think that that's a good idea because little little things, there's another alarm box in there. Look, you know, I can take that out with the remove tool. Um, let's just go down here. There's another alarm box there. Let's see if the remove tool can deal with that, which it does reasonably well. It did it did mess up the um, the bracket there. So we could we could zoom in there and use generative fill on that one. It is tiny, however, you're hardly going to see it. But let's for the sake of um, detail, let's just Let's just take that out using generative fill. So I just used a lasso tool there, generative fill and generate. There we go. It's kept the bracket together there. So happy with that. Anything else down here? Is is that a, another alarm box here? Probably is. Just going to take that one out. Take out the shadow as well. There we go. Generative fill and generate. Yep, it's done very well. Going to go back to the remove tool. Select the background there. There is another, lots of alarm boxes. Nobody wants their shops broken into. So remove that one. In fact, the big black blob, maybe we should go over it again with the remove tool. There we go. Did you see that by going over it again? It, it fixed that. There's another one up here. I'm just going to remove that one as well. That went okay. So look around on the other side of the street. Make sure there's nothing here. There is another alarm box here. So let's see if we can remove that one. Did a reasonably good job. Let's see if we can brighten that piece up there. There we go. Do you see that by running over it again with the remove tool? Um, it's surprising. So let's use the remove tool here. Just make it a little bit smaller. Just take that white piece out of the door. And the remove tool, I remember when the remove tool first came in into play, uh, we were very excited. Uh, about how, how much potential it gave us and and what what it was capable of, and then generative fill followed on quite quickly, and uh, we we got lost in generative fill. But the remove tool itself is actually uh, an exceptionally good tool, and uh, of course you don't need to pay extra for it. It won't be a premium a premium product in that sense that we could use it. So see there's an owl sat there looking out now what you'll also see here is we do have some flare lens flare um now you you can try to remove this with uh with the remove tool and i'll, I'll show you i'll give it a go but really you you probably will need to use generative fill for this but that did quite well so let's see if we can do this one okay and that one did okay as well so it's not quite straight you can see there so if you just run over it again with the remove tool it will straighten things up a little bit. You can see I'm just run over it and it will 
each time try to just straighten it up go back through there you'll see it just did it that time it didn't so i'll just undo that so i'm going to go back to that point there okay just want to just pick up on any any bits of debris or any marks i certainly don't like modern drains in the path so let's just um, remove that um let's see if we can remove this drain they're not pretty these modern iron drains yeah that worked very very well a couple of cigarette butts uh, we just need to remove remember we are zoomed in quite quite close uh, i'm going to leave that drain because that looks quite good but i do want to remove this little red bit of plastic that's stuck in the drain there um it's okay i'm just going to take away this um this these two little puddles again they're quite blue we'll leave that one in for now so as i say i'm not going to get into too much detail i know i do get a few comments where people say well you missed this bit and you missed that bit but I, i'm always conscious of the fact that uh um, I've got to try to keep these videos to a realistic length. Um, and to be honest, I could spend an hour just, just with the remove tool tidying, tidying bits and pieces up. So let's make sure we've, we've not got any main things that are bothering us around here. Actually, the streets are pretty clean. Oops, I didn't need to do that. So I'm just going to undo that. We, the streets of, uh, uh, of uh, York are, are, are very clean to be fair I think the local council do a very good job in uh, in keeping the streets clean there are still lots of people who are very careless and, and, and tend to throw litter down but the teams who work tirelessly in these towns and cities to keep our streets clean and tidy you know we have to take our hat off and thank them for the efforts that they make in uh, in keeping our beautiful cities lovely and tidy right I'm not going to spend too much time here because I will get carried away um it's like therapy for me just want to sort out these 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 cables here because they're a little bit distracting got these beautiful rendered walls and uh these cables sort of just drop down uh, from above there so just just taking those out whilst we're here that's fine just going across there and just take that little bit out there there we go i mean the remove tool is is extremely good at what what it can do so this bit here looks okay just a little bit of muck there let's see if we can just tidy that up that's better yep okay i'm think i'm pretty pretty sure i'm happy with that so let let's just zoom out and make sure we're happy and then we can do the uh we can do the sky replacement yeah I'm pretty happy with that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to edit. We're going to go to sky replacement and we're going to use the sky replacement module. Now I've already got one of my skies, my night skies that I took. Um, I won't be sharing that in the, uh, the raw files because um, I've been working hard to put together a set of nighttime shots um, at high resolution and also as raw stroke DNG files. So you will have a lot more dynamic range to play with uh, with these images. So I will be putting those up for sale um, in the near future. I'm working on my website at the moment to bring that together and I'm going to charge a very reasonable sum. I think it, you know, some people charge a bit much for uh, for the skies. And uh, and I think, it, you know, if we can if we can offer a good service, with very high resolution images, then um, at a reasonable price, then everybody can enjoy the hobby. Um, not just the wealthiest of people so that's my plan so fingers crossed that will be up and ready soon this this particular image was shot in uh, South Africa actually this one so um, so it doesn't really belong in York but it's a lovely starry sky um, beautiful when you're out in the bush in 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 Africa you it's incredible what uh, what you can see so um, as you can see there it's uh, a beautiful a beautiful sky so I'm just going to move it around and try and find a place that it works. I, I quite like this this uh, bright object in the sky. I think it was uh, one of the planets. I was quite zoomed in. Um, so I want to just find a place where the colours sort of work quite well. Where's the edge? The edge is over here. And I've also got probably got a little bit of headroom there. So I can just bring that around. I'm conscious that we're going to get a bit of an overlap here. So we just have to be careful that we... We try to match the colours a little bit where it's maybe a bit brighter 
in there and we will need to use the refine tool. So I'm going to go and put that just off center and I'm going to come in maybe a bit lower. I think we're going to go there. Now we can do something about this by using the sliders. Um, so shift edge is always a good one. If you move it to the right, it will bleed more into the foreground. If you move it more to the left, it will bleed away from the foreground. So if I go left, you'll see that it just becomes almost like an overlay in that area, which works quite well with the blue sky. But we do need to try to bring that. If I further I go to the right, the more of the original image and the original color that you will see. But you will start to blend in over these edges. You can see that. So we need to find a nice compromise, which is probably around about there. Maybe just a little bit more. There we go. And then the fade edge, if I go far left on the fade edge, you can see that it, it tries to bring the sky right up to the edge. If I go to the right, you'll see that you get less of, of that effect. So you get less bleed. So it's trying to find the balance. And where I'm really looking is around this light with these flares. This is really tricky to try to find that perfect area there. You see this is brightened up as a result of the fade edge, the phase edge moving over. So I'm just going to bring that over there find the balance point if i go too far it's it, it looks a bit unrealistic so just going to come back in i think around about there that works quite well add a little bit more temperature to the sky not a lot just a little bit and uh, and i think that works quite well um now one of the things that we we will look at when we go back is we want to match the reflection on these windows to the sky all right now we could do it here in photoshop but actually there's a really quick and easy fix back in lightroom um so I, i'm going to do that back in lightroom i realize here that there's a, a little bit of brightness around that sign that i do need to remove so we'll deal with that in a second so let's just finish let's just finish this off so um I'm going to go to the foreground lighting and if you move that to the far right you'll see that it darkens down the buildings takes away the bleed over from the sky if I go to the left you'll see that it, it, it's much brighter up there so in fact I do want it a little bit darker up there so I'm just going to move that across and then you've got edge lighting far left on the edge lighting far right on the edge lighting it deals with the the interface between the foreground and the background and it's quite a good tool actually if you go far left you see that it's brighter here if I go far right, you'll see it's darker there. So we do actually want to try to allow that to be a bit brighter there over that area. So I'm, I am going to go a little bit to the left with this one and make sure we're happy with it. And then the color adjustment balances the color of the sky to the foreground. And the further you go to the right, the more you get the color coming from the sky into the foreground. So if I go over there like that, you can see it brings the color into the foreground. If I go to the left, we get the original color. But I do like the original color, so I'm not going to take too much away. I love this sort of browny yellow look of all the buildings. It, it looks quite good. And this is blended very well. I'm very happy with that. Now, if we just zoom in, just before we finish with this, if we just zoom into one of these edges, you'll see that we're getting star bleed from the sky. And I'm zoomed into like 800% right at the moment. So we're really, really close. But we are getting a bit of star bleed here. So you might say, well, how, how do we get rid of that? By the way, for zooming... You can see we're in the we're in the magnifying glass. We've got a positive, so I can click and go positive. If you hold down the option or alt key on Windows there, it will it will minus. So you can zoom in or you can zoom out. But I also use a touchpad, so I can I can also zoom in and out um, by doing that as well. So but let me just show you how we can deal with that bleed. Okay, what we do is we go to the refine tool. There's actually a refine tool here in the sky replacement, second one down. And uh, we'll take a slightly bigger tool. Now, the refine tool works on where the cross in the center is. At the moment, it's a positive. So if I click inside the dark edge here, right, it will make it brighter. Can you see that? So the more I do that, it make it brighter because it's a positive. So if I just undo that, Command Z, Command Z, right? What we want to do is we want to make it a negative. So we hold down the Alt or Option key. So it's now a negative. And then we can effectively paint that that bleed over away and because we overlap the edge because the, the center of that circle is in the dark edge you can see here it's in the dark edge it won't affect the sky it will only affect the building so you can see that i can remove that bleed over now i went one too many there on that corner i've got a little bit of blue come back through so i'm just going to undo that there okay so you can see there's a little bit of bleed over there this is more tricky i need a very small and we're just going to come in a little bit 
going to come in a little bit tighter there. So I'm just going to go to the zoom tool there and just just come in a little bit more. We need to just take away that blue that blur that sort of blurry bit there. So I'm just going to make the brush the same size. I'm going to click once with a negative, not a positive. I'm going to click once holding down the Alt Option key, and then I'm going to hold down the Shift key so I can draw a straight line. Uh, so I clicked again. So I still have my finger on the Option Alt key to keep it as a minus, and then I held the Shift key. I'm going to go back up again because it's still there and click again. You see how that's got darker again? And I'm going to come down and I'm going to click again. And those stars gradually are being removed. So I'm just going to come in here, take these ones out, make the brush bigger. Now what you can see is there's a little bit of bleed over on all of this sign here because we, we were right on the limits, the very edges of uh, of what was possible. Let me just zoom out again. Righto. So I'm just going to move up here, and we're just going to use that uh, that tool again, just to just to uh, take a bigger brush, keep it on the dark bit, just run it round here, and as you can see, any bleed over that we're getting, we can remove. So just I'm going to that was a positive. Apologies, apologies. We need a negative brush, and then I'm just going to come through. You can see it on the windows there. Just going to take away any bleed over of the stars into these areas. Make that brush a little bit smaller. Keep it on a negative. So just take away those those stars. I'm just going to run down here. And take a slightly bigger brush, keep it on the positive now, just to fill in around that that light there. That worked quite well. Negative again, because I can just see there is a little bit of bleed over along that edge there. Same with that roof. Very good. The refine tool is exceptionally good. At filling in those gaps, just going to look up here. We've got any bleed over here? Nope. Not happy with that. So I think we've got a really good sky replacement there. I just need to deal with this. I'm just going to bring all these generative fill layers together. So before, just before I do that, I need to accept this. So you've got uh, two two outputs here: new layers and duplicate layer. New layer gives you all the separate layers in Photoshop, so you can continue to adapt things separately. Duplicate layer that just makes us uh, a, a new layer with the with the new the new on it. So I'm just going to turn off the old the old um, background and I'm going to right click and say um, on on this this layer here, I'm going to right click and um, merge merge visible. There we go. And I don't need that back one turned on. So we brought those all together into one. So I can now just deal with this little bit of light here that we have. Um, just want to sort that out because it's a little bit distracting. There's sort of light behind this sign. I'm going to use the stamp tool to remove this here. So I'm just going to click on there, take a effectively a, a copy from above, and then I'm just going to paint this this in and try to remove try to remove that that sort of area there. There we go. So that worked quite well. A little bit of blue around here, a little bit down here. So I can take another another cut here and just wash that in a little bit down there edge of this bottom of this sign, just select a little bit further over and then just paint that bit out. Works okay. Same here, just uh, a little bit, just to, just to dimmen that down a little bit. That's fine. So happy with that. Let's just come back. There is a few stars in the center of that light. We will correct that in, um, in, in Lightroom, but I'm just going to just take those out now with, uh, with the remove tool that's fine okay let's zoom back so i think we are ready to go back into lightroom and we'll do the final final processing there so to do that i'm going to go to um, file close because i don't want it in uh, photoshop anymore and i'm going to click save and then i'm going to go back into uh, lightroom and there we have it it's back with us so excellent 
So let's have a let's have a think what we need to do. We need to deal with the blue windows. I don't like the blue here. That needs to be dealt with. Um, and this little thing, I know I talked earlier about how wonderful it is that it, it's worn away, but it is a little bit distracting. Right on the edge here, um, you know, border police, we need to we need to deal with that. So I'm just going to go to the hill tool there, um, select content aware, which is this one here, if you can see, and uh, and I'm just going to just paint that out and it will remove that for us. Now, the um, heel tool and the content aware tool in, in Lightroom is still very good, but it isn't anything like as good as uh, as what we see in Photoshop. So that's why I tend to do that work in Photoshop. So let's get these last bits dealt with. We need to do with the blue. That's important. So the best way to deal with that is to select a mask and in the mask we're going to go down to ranges and we're going to select a color range okay so what we want to do is we want to select a mask based on a color and seeing that there isn't much vivid blue here then the luminance right uh, the color range sorry will be the one to select so i'm going to select that we're going to zoom in onto that blue there we go and we're going to click the blue the pipette and you can see it's selected a lot of the blue there I zoom back out again, you'll see that there, there is quite a bit of blue being picked up, right? Um, but I also want to pick up this blue as well. So I'm going to hold down this shift key and you'll see that the pipette turns from a standard pipette to a plus. And I can click on that color blue and you can do it up to five times. You can add five different layers. You can see that it's gone in there. Now you see the sky's also lit up but that's because there's blue in the sky and I'm not too worried about removing some of that blue I'm quite happy with that I can demask that if I want to but I'm going to go with what we've selected here so we have all the blue selected okay so what we need to do is remove the blue all right so either we can desaturate or we can bring up the temp so I'm going to start bringing up the temp there we go so I brought that all the way up to give us a quite a, a warm effect still a little bit of blue in there right so we can desaturate, right? So we can desaturate that back. And you can see there that it's actually gone to almost the color of the sky now. And this has gone much, much whiter, right? We can always add color back into the whole scene. Still a bit of blue up here. So I'm going to create another color range. And I'm just going to select that blue up there. So this is a darker blue. Okay, so I'm just going to warm that up a little bit as well and desaturate slightly just to take away that blue. So we don't have that bright blue. Uh, sh shining through so so I'm happy with that now final process really is just to add some light back into this scene so let's just uh, pop that back to fit and what we want to do is we want to light up um, a few of the areas it's already well lit down the bottom there I think this area here needs to be a, a little bit brighter and I would like to light these signs up so you can read them easiest way to light these signs up is either one select object and then literally just paint round the sign and the object selection will select the sign there we go and then you could just add exposure to that and maybe add some contrast to that as well probably a bit too bright so I'm not going to brighten it too much just add a little bit there but I'm definitely going to add some uh, clarity to that so it pops a little bit more there you can see that works well I can add even more clarity if I want to to really make the sign stand out a little bit better so I'm going to go about there need to do the same for this so create an object mask and I'm just going to come in here this one's not going to be as bright okay so I'm just going to add uh, pop in some clarity and just add a little bit of brightness there we go and some contrast and that works that works very very well we do need to make sure that the shop the shop name here is 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 lit up is a little bit clearer so i'm going to take a, a brush i'm going to take a quite a high flow full feather and i'm just going to wash down there and wash across here with the brush and then i'm going to add a little bit of exposure right a little bit of contrast and my good friend clarity just to make that that pop there as well so that's working quite well not like I can do with this side. I think that 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 could stay as is. Uh, have, I think we should darken maybe the very top of the screen down. So we'll create a mask here, linear gradient. So we're a nice straight long gradient. We can pull down from the top, and then we can apply 
just a little bit of uh, exposure darkening at the top and maybe just a little bit of blue in there just to bring that blue back to the top but we only want the sky we don't really want this too dark so we we could either subtract uh, the sky or intersect using the three dots we could intersect the mask with the sky and that would would select effectively and that would leave these areas bright whilst darkening the sky at the top that works quite well so this little area here just need to brighten this so i think i want to brighten the shop window i think that that would be a good thing to do so to do that we're going to create a radial gradient and we're going to pop a nice big radial gradient on this window now you might be tempted to put it in the middle like this don't do that put it put it up towards where the light might be inside that room up towards the ceiling and then give yourself a little bit of a slant you know nature isn't completely perpendicular it doesn't have 90 and 180 degree angles everywhere it tends to be more 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 um, more flexible more chaotic in the way so try to move move the wheel away from the vertical horizontal there we go and now i'm going to raise the exposure quite a bit right i'm going to add in some contrast Quite a bit of contrast and uh, I think it's probably the right color in terms of temp I could add a little bit more but I'm definitely gonna add some magenta in there just to balance that color off you can see you get uh, a, a more realistic color when you add in a little bit of magenta I'm just gonna back the saturation off just a little bit and then I'm gonna add some clarity to that shot not too much because it's working quite well now you think oh that doesn't look so good and I agree with you all of this so we need to remove that around from there so let's zoom in first let's go into a hundred percent space bar to move over so we can see where we are I'm going to go in even closer so we're going to go going to go into uh, 200 percent right so we can see that window so we need to take these window frames away from the mask so we'll start up here what we do is we subtract a brush okay and I'm going to subtract uh, a brush here which I've now selected Going to go to the settings for it. I'm going to put the flow really quite high, 90%, and I'm going to put the feather really quite low, about 5%. And I'm going to take a click along the edge of this window frame here, like so, and I'm going to go to the other end and, and shift click to get a straight line. So I've removed the the um I'm removing the radial from this area. So I've made the brush a little bit bigger and I can do another one along there. Same down here, I can come to the edge of this, this beam here, click once, hold the space bar down, move down to the bottom here, hover over that edge there, shift click, and I can take out for that, that area there as well. We'll do the same along the bottom, click, shift click. So we're not, we're not brightening up unnecessarily, and we'll do a little bit smaller brush this time. We're going to come up along the edge of this window here. There we go. Shift, click, shift, just to bring that down. This area is all very, very bright, um, so I'm actually just gonna just gonna paint over that to to remove the uh, the radial gradient from that area there. There we go. Bigger brush. We're just gonna wash down through here, across here, just removing that that extra bit of light that the radial's placing. On the door so I'm always changing the brush size you'll note that I'm always always changing the brush size and um, so we get the, the brush the right size just make that sign on the door a little bit darker there we go right so we've gone all the way around the outside all the way around the outside so we're back to a bigger brush just take that bit out as well so we just need to do these frames here so what I'm going to do is make take my brush and make it the size of the window frame you can see there and then I'm going to come down and I'm going to click shift literally unfortunately because these are not perfectly straight I can't do the whole lot in one go um, but what I can do is I can uh, I can do quite a few of them that one's that one's curved there and that one needs to go to there and because I'm shift clicking each time I'm drawing a straight line on from where I was previously as you can see so I'm gonna just speed up the video and get the rest of these done because uh, there's quite a few to do here and uh, I'll be back in a moment okay 
There we go. Now I'm going to zoom back. And I just want to make sure that I get rid of the rest of the the rest of the um, the mask. So if I hover over the over here in the mask menu, you'll see if you hover over radial gradient, you can see where the radial gradient is. If I hover over the brush, you can see where the brush is. OK, so we know we need to put a little bit more removed from the door there. And this area up here has not been fully addressed. So just just getting that area there. And if I hover over the mask itself, you can see what's been what's been painted out and what hasn't been painted out. So I know that I need to go all the way around the outside. So we're just going to make that brush a little bit bigger there and just take out that bright bit just there. And uh, we're just going to go around there, hover over again. As you can see, that looks OK. Just a little bit more there. So now what we do is we take a bigger brush and making sure we don't go over the areas we've been. We're just going to wash right the way around the outside, overlapping the area that we've already painted out go you can also if you've got a straight line shift click to get around there and if I go back to the mask you can see that there's still a little bit a little bit down this area here because that was the edge of this brush I'm gonna make the brush a little bit smaller and we're just going to redo those areas there let's have a look again that's okay along the top there along the bottom hover over again just a little bit more over here Hover over again. Yep, we're getting close now. And then this, just this last bit up here, which we uh, we need to remove. So I'm just gonna paint that. And there we have it. The window and the doors are the only bits of the uh, of the radial gradient that are showing. So now any changes that we make to this this particular mask will affect the shop window. So you can see we can make it brighter or darker. We can turn the lights on and off inside that uh, inside that shop. So I can bring that up to there. Maybe add in a bit more contrast, a little bit more magenta to balance that yellow. That looks very nice. And um, even open up the shadows inside the shop a little bit if we wanted to. Bring down the highlights. So you can see you can play around. You can play around with that. Now the top area here is just a little bit too bright because this is the reflection. Of the windows opposite and I just want to bring that down a little bit so what we can do here is we can also whilst we're on this mask we can intersect this mask right with a linear gradient and we can pull a linear gradient down from the top here flip it over there we go and we can darken the top down so you can see you can you can pick that there. So now what we can do is we can bring down the highlights further. And we can also just drop that away a little bit more. So go back to the linear gradient. So this is the brightest part of the gradient. This is the darkest part of the gradient, right? So this is 100%. This is, this is zero up here. So you can move that in just to see where you think that works quite well. So that's good. Happy with that. I'm still not happy with these windows. So what we can do is we can go back into mask, select an object. OK, I'm just going to zoom in here onto this window because they are rather distracting. And what we can do is we can take. Like so an object there and it will select that inside that window for us so we can then see whether we can actually decrease the brightness still further, which we can do. And we can just work our way through here, add another object to this one. Just make that brush a little bit smaller. There we go. So I can just work my way around adding um, an object in just for the areas. There we go. Much better. Right, zooming out. So that's a really good use of objects if you want to uh, if you want to do that. Good stuff. If you wanted to make it still darker along that top edge of the window, you can always add in a, a localized uh, linear gradient if you wanted to. So now I'm pretty happy with this, with this image. I'm just going to zoom back to fit. I think we need a little bit more light in this area here just to brighten this up. So all I'm going to do there is create a new mask, select a radial gradient here, 
and I'm just going to pop a radial gradient into this this sort of shot down here on the bottom corner I'm just going to brighten that up there like that bring the exposure up you can see how that just lights that area there and maybe just a little bit on this door so create another radial gradient here and I'm just going to pull a radial gradient down on this door as such and just brighten that up a little bit as well so that as though there's a light out of shot here this is a bit bright on this edge we'll deal with that put some contrast in there and a little bit of clarity just want to take that edge away so we can do that a number of ways we can best way here is intersect this with the linear gradient and uh, I can just take the linear gradient here and just place it on the edge there just to darken that down ever so slightly lovely job blended in so I'm going to say we're pretty well there just need to just alter the colors slightly for the scene so I'm just going to come out of the masks here we're going to uh, we're going to go down to um, vibrance add some vibrance in vibrance is a lovely thing a little bit of clarity not a lot a little bit of texture just to make the bricks on the walls stand out and the, and the cobbles on the street just just stand out a little bit um, I think we're getting pretty close I don't really want to open up the shadows anymore um, I'm quite happy with that I think the center of the lights just need to be whitened because we've we've pushed it a little bit too far and we can easily do that by creating a mask a radial gradient taking a small radial gradient like that popping it into the middle of the light and then just boosting the exposure to get that whiteness back and uh, I'm just going to right click on that and duplicate that mask take that across put it on this one over here and just make it a little bit smaller just so we've got a nice bright light and of course because it's further away just drop back the brightness slightly let's just see how they look yeah they look nice these signs need just a little bit more light on them so I'm going to just take um, another uh, radial gradient here Pop it onto these these here ever so subtle this is going to be just a little bit of brightness there a little bit of contrast and uh, of course our good friend clarity right click on that duplicate that mask pop it up onto these ones just to make sure that they're standing out a little bit that's good this sign over here really isn't a a very good sign in the sense that it's uh, it's not very medieval it's obviously a a more modern sign here so I'm just gonna just gonna pop one on there and just bring that brightness up and one of the reasons why we copy the mask over is so that if I alter this one it doesn't change the other ones if you just copied over the radial gradient you'd find that you would you'd end up with um, all of them changing at the same time so that's fine um I pretty well think I pretty well think we're there just gonna zoom back out and take one more look maybe pop it into full screen and just see if we're if we're comfortable with that a little bit of color adjustment required but I think we're all pretty well there so I'm just going to come out of full screen we're going to go in and uh, back off the um, temp just a little bit it has a huge effect it really does uh, we were up there remember so we're just going to come down probably to round about there add that a little bit more vibrance in just to make it stand out and I would say that we're finished. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Of course, there's always more you can do and you can always have more fun. But to take a shot at night where you've got a lot of contrast, you've got street lights, uh, you've got a lot of darkness, you do need to think about how you're going to get that full dynamic range. And what we did here was we had two images that were more than two stops apart and we brought them together in an HDR and that, that worked very well to give us that sort of um, lighting effect. Now, I know normally I do day to night. So we've done a little bit of day to night here with the shop window, but we had the street lights there. If you're going to have the street lights in the shop, try to make the best of them. And F11, F, F sort of 13 is probably as far as you want to go in terms of trying to get those diffraction lines, which look really good on the lights. Um, if you go much past it, F14 into F16, you start getting diffraction overall in the image and it softens the image a little bit. So it's always sort of finding that balance really between between the two. But uh, 
Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give me a like uh, and uh, appreciate your comments and questions and tips. Feel free to put them down below. And if you haven't already subscribed, it'd be wonderful to, for you to join my adventure here on YouTube. And um, I was just going to say for now, we're done. So bye bye.